Welcome back to the McCowan Podcast. Dave Hodge in for Bob this week. And uh, I, I truly mean this with all sincerity. Uh, Lou Lamorello is one of my favorite people in the game of hockey. Uh, for some reason, somehow <laughs> there was a, uh, a a bond that was created with uh, with Lou and myself over, gosh, I guess the last 30 years that there was a no bullshit level that was always allowed, never allowed to happen. And Lou Lamorello uh, always kept his part of the bargain. So, Lou, welcome to the show, and uh, I hope you're well. I am, and thank you. Uh, my pleasure, John, as always. And uh, it's great to be with Dave and again. Uh, and very kind of you, and I feel the same. We've had many luncheons, uh, maybe didn't agree on everything, but ended up agreeing on everything else. I'm not I'm not sure. Should I ask you first about the Islanders or the Yankees? Well, you can go where, wherever you want because you're going to go there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, Yankee, uh, the, the Yankees are 19 and 9 in September. I mean, they're, they're playing pretty well. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, you know, they got off track there for a while. You know, you, you, you lose a key player like they did uh, in Judge. Uh, but uh, uh, I watched the game. Uh, the other night, uh, I should say, last night with Cole, uh, some some job he's done as far as uh, he personifies to me what uh, an elite player should be both on and off the ice. The way he prepares, takes care of himself, and I hope he I hope he gets the side. Uh, it was a nice opening, John. I guess that means I'm going to ask the tough questions. Is that that's uh, right? That's right. Today's uh, the tough questions from Hodge Day. Is that how you're uh, setting things up? Yes. Um, I, I mean, I, I want to start with an easy one uh, and tell Lou that we've had a series of discussions this week about, about the coming NHL season uh, with what I will call passing interest. John, would that be would that be fair? Yeah, I think so. Exhibition season is hard you know, with, with, all, with all the other distractions of other professional sports. Yeah. So um, not the same for you, Lou. Uh, what are you watching for as you watch your team, some of your team, uh, beat some of the uh, Philadelphia Flyers 2-1 to one last night? What do these games do for you? What do they mean for you? Well, what you try and do is certainly see where, first of all, where your veterans are as far as uh, uh, the shape they're in uh, and also the mental uh, approach that they're taking and because we haven't really seen a lot of them uh, since the summer uh, to me that's first and foremost because they're the uh, foundation of the team and and then without question uh, the younger players uh, because they're in the lineup uh, you try and put them with the veterans try and see what they can and can't do uh, you know and you know when you go into a first exhibition game and for example do you go into Madison Square Garden and how are you, a couple of younger players going to react? Because uh, there's no question, uh, there's butterflies. So basically, it's a combination of both, Dave. It's watching the veterans and watching the young guys. Very simple. And you and you know that uh, uh, the rest of the league looks at the Islanders with the coming season in mind and asks one question, the uh, same question I'll ask you. How do you get more out of this lineup? Because right now, it doesn't look, uh, all that different? Well, uh, first of all, uh, that's the question that everybody is asking. If that's what you're saying, uh, I'm not worried about that question. When you say uh, we feel who we are and, and what we've got there, there are players that certainly didn't have the seasons last year that we anticipated they would, and uh, we feel they can and should, and certainly in the improvement of the uh, younger players who were in the lineup. Uh, we've got a couple of excellent young players. How much? Uh, how much do you think Lane Lambert learned over that first season behind the bench? And and have you noticed a difference in a coach that now has head coaching experience? Uh, without question, I don't think that uh, there's anyone who doesn't gain experience uh, or confidence. Uh, after their first season. I can remember myself coming in my first season in New Jersey and then the second season. There's a, there's a comfortability. Uh, you, you know the people. Uh, you know where you're going. Uh, even as far as the things outside the rink, where you live, where you're driving, 
all of the above, even though Lane was here as an assistant, you still have a different uh, route that you're going. Uh, you're there at different times. So there's a lot of comfortability that comes with the first year. And there's a lot of reflecting you can go and look at during the summer as far as what you liked about yourself, or what you liked about different things, and how would you make it better? So there's no question. And I've said this uh, many times, uh, you don't really know what experience is and, until you uh, have the opportunity to get it. One guy you would be quite happy to see repeat everything that he did last season is Brock Nelson by a margin of 16 points, his best season. What, what makes him so good and uh, so valuable to your team? Well, he has uh, gotten better each and every year. And, and you said it, he had uh, an exceptional year. Uh, but the way he, he takes care of himself, uh, the way he prepares, uh, he's a consummate pro, uh, and he has God-given talent. I mean, he's he's built for this game. He's big. Uh, he's an excellent skater. Uh, you know, he has all, all the tools, so to speak, uh, but what he does is uh, he puts him in uh, together uh, and on a, on a constant basis. He, he's, a, he's a real pro. Would you would you think that with your roster is because you look at you look at your forwards um, is, is depth your biggest strength when it comes to what what you have in your in your forward group? There's, I I believe so. I I think that uh, I think that what we have is uh, in our forwards uh, we've got uh, four strong centers uh, who play different roles uh, actually. Uh, right now, at this point, we have Mont Belzell at the right wing, who could also play center. So our strength is down the middle, and we have to score, uh, you know, a, as a group uh, to to have success as far as that goes. And I think you know my philosophy: it's goal differential. Uh, I'm not worried about uh, how many goals we score. I'm worried about our goal differential. Would Would you prefer Barzell at center? Um, not necessarily. I think that uh, I, I think that he can adapt uh, to where he's at and be uh, even more effective, uh, you know, offensively. Um, but uh, only time will tell. I think that uh, he and uh, Bo Horvath have created a, a a real good chemistry in the brief time that they have together. So we'll have to see how that wears out. But that is the intention uh, at this point. I would uh, I would count Ilya Sorokin as uh, as a, a strength, one of your biggest strengths. Uh, I know that it was hard to argue with the stats that uh, that Allmark put up because of what Boston did last season. But I thought Sorokin was the best NHL goalie last year. Um, I always I always chuckle um, about a conversation I I once had with Brian Burke about the general managers voting for the Vezina Trophy. Uh, and Brian Burke saying, I know nothing about goalies. Um, and a lot of other general managers, uh, was his opinion, uh, don't either. And uh, then he proceeded to lobby for an Executive of the Year award, which has come to pass and which you have won twice. Uh, congratulations, back to back. Um, and then I said, well, if that ever comes to pass, maybe the goalies could vote for it. <laughs> But um, your comments about about Sorokin, do you want you want to agree with me that he was the best goalie in the league last year? In my opinion, I uh, agree with you, and uh, uh, was certainly delighted to have him in our island the uniform for the period of time that we have him. Uh, and he's another consummate pro. Uh, the way he prepares and gets ready uh, to play, and a, and a great human being. Uh, in fact, we're fortunate to have two, and he and uh, Volomov, uh, they just make a great pair. And I'm one who believes in goaltenders, uh, and uh, not to be redundant, but uh, I believe that's where you start and build out from goaltenders. You had to smile. I have to smile because for the longest time when you were across the river in Newark uh, or the Meadowlands, um, you had a goaltender that could play 65 75 games and now you probably have the best tandem uh, in the national hockey league H has has your philosophy changed because of the game or has your philosophy changed because of the talent you have 
Well, I, th I think because of the game, uh, it's changed. I think the scheduling is totally different than it was, John, years ago. Uh, you know, there's more time off, which uh, with reference to breaks, uh, which relates to games being played, uh, you know, more three and out of fives and two out of threes and back to backs. Uh, so I think that you need two goaltenders uh, in this game today. Uh, if you want to go on and to the playoffs and you want to go potentially with one goaltender, uh, it's even more important during the season to have him ready physically uh, to go through a playoff series. So I think that in my opinion, once again, uh, uh, two goaltenders is something that I, I believe we're very fortunate with. And, you know, but you have to certainly have the right ones.